Hello everyone. Um, I'm from the channel Meal the Movie in America, and today I like to um go over ten ten things to do and ten things that don't do in two thousand twenty two for a uh, fishing friendly for the beginner at uh Lower Yuba River this winter and um. Uh, Today is January the 14th, so there are, um, you know, I went up and down the river and uh, to two or three different spots. And I find out that um, fishing report to you now for the Loba Yuba River, it's slow for me because um, between January the 3rd and the tw until the 12th and I went there about midday until 4 or 5 o'clock so but it's still somewhere to go and just fishing expo so just don't give up and today I wanted to go over 10 10 thing to do and 10 thing that you don't do because I just do some research and I think it might be a good idea to put it out there and just in case because I'm still in this uh, lower Yuba River and I think it's interesting that the mysterious for this what do and what don't do at this river at this Yuba River it might be helpful from somebody that knew like me so um I usually just use my uh regular fishing pole that I'm non related with the fly fishing and I use the casting style and the artificial just you know, forcing fishing barbless hook that was I've been using. So, and um, you know, one day I'll I'll get my skill up and become a fire fishing. I never know, but it seemed difficult for now. But I'm still like to enjoy fishing with the way I feel comfortable with and I just want to learn more about uh, things to do and don't do so there are uh, also I'm gonna go over with thing, 10 things to do and 10 things I don't do and also I will explain about the mysterious thing that I I heard so many people say about this and that, like, you know, what it's really the truth about what if I out. So, here what I'm gonna go over with, like, uh, what the cut line of this, uh, season close and when they reopen, which is now they open, you know, but, uh, so, here they are, if you live near Grass Valley or nearby all the way to, if you're in the area like local, you know, I mean 50, 50 mile radians around lower, lower, lower Yuba River, I think that considering a local because you can still do a day tip and drop your car and park and drop your line and just enjoy a day and just go back to your pad, you know? So there are section A and section B and it cut off at the Highway 20 bridge. So the section B is from the Inglebright Dam site to Lake Wawu site. So that section is uh, Usually they close during fall season 
to allow the fish to uh, native fish to recover and they spawn. So December the first to August thirty first, they reopen it, and this section, it's uh, it's along the highway twenty, and when you go to this section B, there are some, there are the rules that same with the other section too, you know. So, which is mean you need to use the barbless single hooks and artificial only. No bed, no light worm, no, no grasshopper, no live nymph, no water bug, nothing, just unreal eggs, which is, you know, fake salmon eel, plastic. Uh, this so you get it the section b it's uh you know where the highway 20 bridge is don't you i hope you do so and then the other section is the section a and that's how i read it out from the side that uh the post is just before you entering and go fishing and they have a little tube the survey tube that you know you do a survey and all this and other stuff also first thing you needed to have if you are have a yuba river in your mind and still head in your mind it's your uh of course everybody have a fishing license and on top of that you just pay another a dollar something and then nine dollar to get another uh still head report card and that's pretty much what you need and just be mindful about barbless hook no sense of any kind artificial sense you cannot use that um i think life is good after that you don't have to worry about you know, get any ticket or anything because you ain't do nothing wrong. And go back to the section A. So now we are still at the highway 20 bridge. And it was both sides. So the side that if you from Grass Valley, Lake Wildwood, and then Smartville, and then the bridge. So that's the section B. So now you cross the river. Now you come to the section A, which is the section A on Highway 20 bridge to Yuba City. They call it the mouth of the Federal River. And uh, below the, I hope I pronounce this right, Dangare Dam. So this is the section A, which this section is very popular because uh basically excuse me basically you uh this section is open year round you can you know fish whenever and so section a i break out to four or five different spots that uh, it depends on where you want to try to do your fishing journey and I usually go into a three different access point because it's open for the public the parking lot is free and it just easy to access point to just grab your fishing pole lock your car and get your lure ready and just enjoy your day so and i'll tell you which uh i'm gonna go over first uh from the bridge the first point when you go to the highway 20 bridge 
you can turn left if you come from Grass Valley. It's called Park Bar Road and it's a public access with a few points that you have to watch your step that you might enter in somebody property and you don't want to do that. So, and you can still, uh, it's just a short distance that you can hike along the river trail and you just park your car next to the dirt wall that kind of next to the highway 20 and then just walk down and look for the spot that's not gonna snag your fishing line so much and whatever best for you and just go for it so that's called park bar road and just make sure you don't go to and do what out for the private property that they just put the no allow sign anyway so other than that you're good to go so that was the public exit that you can go fishing okay that's called park bar road and the second one I received to go because my car wasn't like I expect a uh, more easier or not like just too tough to go down the road and do extreme adventure and I'm not that person so so it's called Hamilton his spot is well known for the best water for this fishery and um so just like i mentioned i don't have a car and i believe that uh to access this area dealing if we have some weather and all and other stuff you're gonna end up seeing like a a, a big uh you know potholes and it's non-maintenance road condition if you like to have like ATV and the court and do all of that then yeah this spot will be the it you know it'll be fun but I don't have none of that so check it out with the Hamilton because a lot of locals go to Hamilton and I think it's if you look for the road called some sort of a bonanza then you just keep going to the spot called Hammon 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 okay so that's a lot of uh, different angler go there because it's still a, a base water body of the water for the Yuba lower Yuba river I would say but I never try it so the third one, this is my favorite spot. So it's called Hammond Grove Park, and it's well maintained, it well maintained park. It, the parking is free, and it it's excellent space for a uh, parking space, parking lot. It's also public accessible. Um, if you have a relative or somebody love to pay dish golf, this is the the park that you can, you know, everybody can enjoy themselves. Like you go fishing and the other person pick dish golf and all that. So yeah, I like ham. I like Hammond Girl Parks a lot, and they are so that you park your car at the parking lot you can either turn right and walk along the trail go up to a sycamore point I'm not sure I didn't walk that far yet because I end up like the river so beautiful and it was just so exciting I'm just like I just can't wait to just go drop my fishing fishing line to the water and 
I need to do some scouting, you know. But if you know some spot, then I don't know. Some people don't like to share this spot, but I just wanted to because I'm new, and I just wanted to share and be mysterious. Some of the stuff that sometimes you just feel like you can't even. It's about you have to learn and you have to about about you have to look for your own uh, information and sometimes take too much time out of your fun, you know. So if you like my channel, if I know something, I'll let you know. So don't tell me your secret, then I'll go out. Just kidding. So we are at Hammond Grove. So just go back to the parking lot. So when you walk out about maybe less than 10 feet from the parking spot that the parking lot was fantastic. It was just paved with concrete and you just walked out to the dirt and then voila, you got a, a river, beautiful river with a cobblestone and the gravel. You turn to your right, you go up to the sycamore and if you turn to your left, I'm talking about I'm walking down hill facing the Yuba row, lower Yuba River. Then when you turn to left, you just keep going up past the swing spot at the end of the uh, road trip, at the end of the trail during the fall season if you like to just being a, a spectator for a salmon hatchery that would be the spot to go to and check it out it's really neat but you don't see very much but you still see once in a while the body of a zombie salmon will come out and show it to you and you basically just watching the fish behavior and understand life cycle and that's how you like to enjoy it then I recommend doing the salmon exploring for the uh, hatchery and spawning and you know it's interesting because it's local and it's not like a big manufacturing and it's just all natural that's how the fish have eggs and how they gonna have their baby in the river and you there watching them you know it's interesting so Hammond Girl Park is my favorite so so far you know and so I mentioned earlier and if you want to go to a different spot just pass the go back to the highway 20 and keep going towards a uh, direction of Yuba city which is mean when you come out from the parking you will turn left from the Hammond Grove and keep going it shouldn't be more than two miles maybe not even a miles and you will see a car a sycamore ranch so it's also this park is well maintained also have a day use camping i thought it was about 45 bucks if you want to do camping and all that stuff but everything preserved online i'm just gonna forget on uh what they offer for the fishing person you know so you can use that they use they have a huge parking lot the parking lot at sycamore ranch it's bigger than the hammond grove park and when you go all the way towards the end of the parking lot you can basically on the day use section you can see a picnic table you can see a swimming hole where people put a string atta 
attach to the tree and during the summer I think it's probably very busy and because we are in the winter um, I saw a few egret hunting for fish but at Sycamore Ranch to me it seemed like a, it's still water and I haven't do a, a fishing at Sycamore Ranch yet because I still couldn't figure out how I'm gonna walk along the river because if you want to go scout and check it out and if you know something and maybe give me a comment and I might just go ask the caretaker at the parks and where I can go and I think it will be nice to just try it out you know and also another place so that's the sycamore end so as I wanted to talk about and I think the water at the swimming hole at Sycamore Ranch seemed like it's good for a uh, how you call it? Catfish water? It's kind of muddy cray and all and other stuff that you you know what I'm saying? Like still water, it's not like a river run water and the duck the wood ducks and the crane our bird song is so pretty in the winter time and no one there is so nice like I use basically just stay calm and you know it's nice so this is a sycamore ranch in the winter and you can just you feel like want to get go somewhere and have a picnic and yeah, I think that might be a good idea to just go have a picnic table, see the river flow on your backdrop at your picnic table. That's not really nice, isn't it? And so now we done with the sycamore ranch they use where you can drop some fishing line and all that. So now it's called Hallwood. Bulgovan. It's just go touch a uh, university and just look it up. And it will be very busy during the shack season and it's below the Dungare Dam. So that's about uh, all the section A Highway 20. That's I was doing some research about it. And please note that uh, it's also if you want to fish on the creek, they also have a deer creek near Smartville and I still like to go and explore it so I don't know what kind of fish and water but so far I'm just gonna try to learn how to fish and how, how to do it well and successful on lower Yuba River along Highway 20 so then if I feel like I want to go check it out one day and then I'll let you know and I'll post some of a picture of how the fish cherry on a different location that I went and go explore so so this this is pretty much it's called the zone A from I'm just gonna summary for you. The zone A is a park bar road, Hamilton, Hamilton Grove Park, Sycamore Ranch, Howard, Boulevard. So far, it's covered five different zones, and three of them is a public access. So, the park bar road is the public access. The Hammond Grove Parks is public, public access. Sycamore Ranch, it's a day use public access, which is all free. You don't have to pay parking lot, nothing. Just go and have fun. So, so far, 
that was about uh you know the how they divide the section of section A and section B. So now I did mysterious is why you can fish, it's where you can go and do a fishing at Lova Yuba River. And now they are you need to really check like a daily catch limit to on the hatchery trout or steelhead and make sure you check the link or the side that posted on the public access area that you can always read and find out also look it up uh, the fin a dolphin fin i hope i pronounce it right it's just the last fin above the tail fin the tail of the fish and i think you should educate yourself on that one because that was uh they also have some law and rule that immediate relief and you never try to fish a uh, salmon at this river, okay? Just rainbow trout and still rainbow trout that over 16 inches is considering still heads. So when you in the car, just write down code 17 on your still head card report. That was all all of this that I was cover around the spot that go fishing it is called code 17 okay on your card report so and I've been reading article from the guy named Tom Cannon and I think he have a a very good suggestion a few things that I like to bring it to you and just share it from his blog and his article. This is very interesting and it's just gonna give you like juice up, give you so much energy like yeah I'm gonna go get this and get that so I'm gonna try this and which love I'm gonna get and all that so this is what he's he wrote this is back on his article on 2015 it's a while back but it's still a legend so he said winter being the best time for steelhead and rainbow towel fishing it's very important to match the hatches of this fishery in january and february it's the most permanent hatches of swala stonefly and brewing olive I hope I pronounce it right and this quoted from Tom Cannon and you know what I did though I just go online and look into different stores like shields and brass bow shop of course you know and i also get stuff from a local fire shop too which is i'm not a fire fisher i just use my spinner you know the regular fishing pole regular reel and still casting style and i just set up my fishing line with the fraud floating fishing and just to create a bobbler sometimes I put two tail on it and you know it works so this is what my drawing if you if you see what I'm saying this is just uh this is my fishing pole so you just set up this floating and then you just do after the 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 bob 
bubbler you just set up to like and I used I used an unreal egg I put like 16 inches and then the other one I used the unreal insect so I actually used the it's called rubber legs from the local fire shop and I set up 18 inches and just a little study about how the fish behave on uh, you know like if they come up or did they just just showing you the fin above this is the river line and it come up from the below that means they eat eating something below the surface if you haven't seen it so what it mean in fishing it mean you just need to put something that's kind of a little bit heavier sink but not to sink because you don't want to get snagged with all the natural dbs and you know cobbler rocks cobbler stone and all the gravel and tea and all another hazard you know and if they are you see the bubble and you see it's bubble from the below or if they jumped out the surface and kind of go back just like my drawing here <laughs> you might be drawing i hope then that means they are eating something above the surface then you need to get something like super light like a, a stone fry i still using like a mix from stone fry shop but i just set up with just the regular spin fishing pole and it works so you know fish fly fishing is such a art for fishing and my skill wasn't there yet so i wish i had but i'm still enjoying what i'm doing now so that means the louder the fish rising up to the surface the bigger fish you can get and lower yuba river is well known with a fat trout so just get that in your thought then you like so now we going to a 10 of his introduction like 30 minutes i hope you still listen to me talking and um now we going into the part that uh can, can do and can don't okay so um so i don't know i was like reading it out and retired it like try to be a a walker and i might post it on elsewhere that in somehow I got the channel in YouTube and I wanted to have some sort. I don't have a website yet, but I have a Facebook and I might post the link to the uh, YouTube channel. Then I'll just post his article that I read it from someone and I just sell thoughts and do study. Um, just put together what information that I needed to know and if you like to check it out you can too you know so I hope you know my English is still all right but not the best in the world but I have to try it before I'm get before I'm ready then I'll be perfect at the end you think already so now we are going to the 10 thing that do and don't on this river okay 
first thing that you wanted to do when you add this uh, at the river and you picking up which spot you are gonna go fishing like uh, for example you right at the spot at the park uh, on the first turn on that spot called Park Gee, what is my it's called Park Bar Road like so you, when you park your car next to that dirt wall under the Highway 20 bridge first thing this is the 10 thing you wanted to do so the first thing in your car you get your still head car report out write down code 17 and they also allow you to input that in the computer in your internet or with your cell phone or whatever it's convenient for you so yeah please do have a still head still head card report and write down the code 17 and just write down the date that you fishing just that two things you need to do so and that's the thing to do that's the first thing so the second the second thing i find out that sometimes if you like comfortable and you want to have the chair to sit down because i usually do a shoreline fishing if you have a backpack for your chair backpack just bring the light chair with you then your life will, will be more comfy for the long day fishing because most of the shoreline of the river river is the cobblestone and sometimes it's hurting the butt it hurt and make up with the gravel too so but if you can find a big rocks and you can put your tooth on and that's fine too but have a chair that would be life changing I would say for comfy though you know and then so the the third the third thing is because you are fishing in the winter time make sure you get your warm gear for the year because several times it's just the wind and the breeze in the winter you feel it because it close to the water and just on your top part just layer it out and you can already layer it and put it back on when it's colder because yeah the weather change like if you're fishing during the day it's get hot and then when it's the sun gone a little bit then it's colder which is hot and cold like the weather have a hot flash or something i don't know but yeah just be aware that you winter fishing just bring extra gear but not overload it because you're gonna be like a lot carried in and out so and then when you uh use the unreal insect they have a different state too and I don't want it to go to a different state of box how from the eggs and they hatch and then have a little wing and they have a big wing and a different time so if you already know that then I would suggest if you know just stick with it that would be you are more successful that you can land the fish at this river because uh there we try we are trying to matching uh artificial lure to the natural feed and if you know that secret then you decode the mysterious you know what i mean so i would say and you want to make sure that if you try i think 
winter it maybe they are the fish graduate from the unreal eggs but I never know the other day like a second or uh, the second or the third in January like just after New Year winter and I I use the unreal eggs and I still I don't know which which one they bite between the uh rubber legs and unreal eggs yeah I got a big fish jump so I never know so what because I'm still new you know and it depends on which fishing spot you add to and maybe they feel like eggs that day and maybe they feel like box that day and the other day maybe they feel like a different artificial whatever you presented to them and they just bite you know maybe they like mosquito or something i don't know so and then the f the fifth one i using the folding uh fishing method because it's helped me to save the lure from snacks on the cobblestone and rocks, tree stump, or ill is like a natural debris bottom. So it's helped a lot because some section that when I go and walk along the river, move around, I the quality of the water and the depth of the water is very it make it very exciting because it was just like you just enter yourself into a different different path that you have to basically repose it you're thinking again what i'm gonna use what i'm gonna put on what i'm gonna present and you know all that stuff so and then just uh one thing keep it in mind that you always gonna use your scent of your touch and your sight you want it to be able to read the water like when they're rising and then when they're lowing because just be aware and caution that you are fishing below the dam and the water can rising quick and you need to get out of there and I never see it yet but just be mindful about the water changing you know just safe that's all I wanted to say and I think the water that you find on this section B I mean section A uh, from I would say it's on the Yuba County side, you know. It's uh the rate of the waterfall is between twelve hundred CFS and greater than one hundred uh, one thousand and five hundred CSF is the ideal condition to fish and that's how they that how we can we can be a good good water to fish too but if anything that's above uh you know the water falls so heavy and it rising over 3000 cfs then you want to get out there during the storm and the heavy water that's not that's not a good water for you. So 1200 to 1500 is the ideal to fish to me. So that's what I do a little study. So And then when you present, you present your lure with the floating with your bobbler and you want your lure at the end of your line it's above the bottom about a feet from the bottom so now i t tell you earlier it's getting critical because 
some body of water or at the river or Yuba River, the lower Yuba River. It depends on where you at, so just keep a feet in mind that that's how you want to present it after your bubbler, you know. You you want your lure to sink to the rock one feet above on the bottom. One to two feet I think will be okay. So that's the that's the best method, you know. I mean not the best but just at least you got some fundamental and common ground like what I'm looking for because I'm new and this is what how I learned and how I'm gonna do and when you have Yuba River in mind this is what number you looking for and with what standard so I just try to do a deep mysterious about it so because of course we are still in the guessing game that uh, what time of the day and which spot that fish if they even stay in the same spot they're gonna bite my lure and all that you know what they are they feel like eating bugs today or they feel like what kind of bug and which state and all that it's a very secretly and if I can decode that then we all gonna be a good successful fishing person you know what I mean we can land a fish all day like yeah <laughs> he had a big fish he had 10 10 inches and he had 12 hey I got 20 <laughs> got a break record of a state record or something you know but that was fun part of the fishing it's all about so just trying to figure it out and learn the fit na nature that how they vary a change of the weather the water the clarity the depth the length the color what in the time of the day are they hungry at noon or are they hungry at sunset or are they hungry in early in the morning so you know if they decide not want to buy, then just sit there all day, don't buy anything, mm, you know. So, it was just a uh, all thing, if you can decode all of that, then that will be a perspective to achieve the catch of the day, I would say. So, I would, I would do... Don't forget to do yourself educate on a deposed fin. I don't know, I pronounce it right, I think. A D I P O S E. So that was the different, find out what different between the natural and the hatchery on that fin and get that knowledge. Then you learn it and you earn it and you own it I would say you know but so and that's what uh, 7 8 9 let's see how many I think that's pretty much uh, the 10 10 thing to do and so the the last thing on the ten thing to do here. Oh god, cause I'm sitting on the floor. Okay. The where am I? Oh, Forty nine minutes already. I okay. So the number eight is you want it to present your lure at one feet from the bottom is the large four thing and it's to be a successful condition okay and the nine is you want to make sure that uh you use a specific 
spot on on the day and the time and it's just like you try to guessing in that area with the are they you want to remember and mark your spot that you using this lever on this spot and you're always successful on that so just basically uh, just trying to put your presentation of your lever and get the right lever and the right time the right day then the fish will bite I don't know how to explain it. It's more like which state of the f the stone fry you're gonna use, or uh, are you gonna use the nim, or you're gonna use a you know a different way when they are uh, the states of the the box. And I believe uh, right now the egg is probably off season because during the fall season but i never know and one thing to keep in mind too if you are uh, targeting what kind of fish are you gonna fish for that day then you just keep stick on that mind that today you're gonna catch rainbow trout and just keep using a different lure and I always remember it's a barbless and as official no live baits and no sense of any kind for this lower yuba river so and uh it's uh yuba river is just still this amazing fishery and excellent fat trout and they have so many native fruit fish so let's see what L is the native fish I'm talking about. So the fish species in Yuba River that so far I do some research. This is what they were talking about. So besides steelhead, and this is what they uh also have in this uh lower Lower, lower Yuba River, okay? So I'll read it for you. Steelhead, Rainbow Trout, Sacramento Suckerfish, and Sacramento Pine Minnow, Striped Bass, American Chat, and Striped Bass. So, you know, of course, someone is out of the picture because this liver, even the salmon, Basically, the salmon egg is just a benefit of uh, the other eggs, and you don't fish salmon here in this river, so and that's an immediate relief if you happen to accidentally caught one, just release it, you'll be okay. So, and uh, that's the 10 thing that you do, that's what I go over. Now I'm going to tell about the 10 things that you don't, okay? So, so you don't spend too much time. My don't is just very short and not, you know, not very much. So just hear me out and see if it's anything that get your add on to knowledge that you already have you know it's just aware and just educate ourselves for it so you don't want to spend the first thing you don't do is you don't want to spend too much time in one spot and do try to enjoy move around a lot though so that's don't do it at one spot and the second don't is just you never fish on any of the floor at over 3000 CSF during the heavy rainfall when the water when the water is rising too high, okay? So that's the dawn. 
and the third one is you not using the same state of the low all the time and be specific with the insect and in the state at the time of the natural insect of their life cycle that the fish can feed it from okay so like when you at the river if you see the real one that landing it on the water like you just try to match a little like that one you know so that's i think that might be a make sense just aware of your surrounding to use the artificial lure to catch fish you know try to catch the still hair so the fifth one is like already like a universal well known at this yuba river that you don't know trouble hooks only a bob list just keep that in mind all the time don't stay and the sixth one is don't stay after dark at the park with public park because sometimes they just put the arm down and they just lock so you just don't get yourself in that situation so the gate usually open one hour before sunrise and one hour after the sunset so you know just get out of there before you get yourself locked in so and then the seven one don't you don't disturb any fish that if you happen to see they spawning off season or whatever or when you see the red just be careful if you you know walking in the water be careful you walk so and the eight one is just do not use the live bait so no live worm no live insect no live water box or especially no live nymphing or because it's against the title i believe the title 14 but i wasn't sure it's anyway no bait nothing no life you just can only use the artificial blur okay and number nine is so you never do attempt or try please don't do them not target or taking any activity of a spawning fish or do not on the do not list so just don't take advantage of when you see when they're spawning which is you know then they can produce more fish at the river and you can go on fishing more because there are more fish there so and then the 10 number 10 she already know so it's pretty much like just do not fish for salmon and even target for salmon or taking or do not do this is the li the thing that you don't do here so if you want to fish for salmon maybe go to a, a sacramento doing a sacramento river or a different river try to catch the salmon this might be a fun game because it's big but not at low lower yuba river so this is the do not to do here so all right so that's about i wanted to uh, talk about 10 things to do and 10 things don't do at uh lower lower yuba river and i also um since it's coming we are in winter and it's coming we are in mid January and it's coming February, so there also some suggest that uh, what you want it to use for your lure because it's a uh, a different 
where is to use you know it's too many choice and what i do some research on on this and sometime every friday if you like to listen to the fishing report on channel 8 30 at six o'clock every friday and it's uh on am station you know just it's help so then you got that more information and cur current fish report from a different a variety of a different body of water you know different places so at uh i do some search engine and google it and this is uh the list that i find out and i i i also looked it up and the last two it's called blue wing olive and saguala stone fire it's hot like it suggests from uh, the professional people that they're very successful with their uh, fishing and cat, cat more fish and they do guide for living which is I'm not a guide tool and I'm not a uh, resale or any kind I just basically a youtuber that's just like to film and share my experience what I learned from my fishing journey to the other and so I also other the stuff from online store from two different store a brass pro shop and this chill I find out these two different store are different because uh on chill you can you can order a small amount they let you like if you want to get just the the brewing olive which is hot for this month and the next month you can get it like maybe just half a dozen or three of them or four of them and you can try it out and see if this water will take it and i'm still waiting for my order and soon as i get it and i'll go try it and see if anything i get by from it then i'll give you a report I ordered a bunch of them and on a different video I'll show it to you and if I successful on which one and I will share to you what I use and they are humpy box they are uh, a rubber legs prince nim they are blue wing olive swagla stone fire but all of this it's uh on the chill store it's the price per each and you you can just order one or you order three or six and i just compare with the brass bow shop at chill you can order like you don't have to order as the bulk bulk but you have to pay the shipping like seven dollar and ninety nine cent, cause I order is under forty bucks, so that's how you pay. But then I went to online on basketball shop and order a different kind similar. I just want to see what it will work and what not, and I I will try it out. At Brass Bowl Shop, I order a uh, artificial worm too, and I also order uh, a stone fly and a different kind of a uh, different color of a blue wing 
are lead, you know, and some of them very fascinated. So, and when you order from Brass Pro Shop, now you have to order like it come with the pack. Like you order a pack of three, or you order pack of six, or you order a pack of a dozen. So the price went up quick, but. For one each, it probably about a buck thirty nine. But then, when you order is enough, then you got a free shipping. So that what I just wanted to mention that you can look it up and try it out. So that what I did, and I'm exciting to get my order in. I don't know. They say it's on the twenty fourth, so take them, take them ten day to get it to my address. Already, that's uh pretty much I wanted to cover about the topic of ten do and ten don't. And sometimes I went to uh put gas in the gas station and. Sometimes gas station have a good buy too, so this is like a pre pre made. Uh, I'm gonna have to use the tool and nip this hook down to make it a barbless, and I can just use the tool to pin it down too. And this is only like a buck forty nine. So when you at gas station and you go in and maybe just look for because the other day I went to basketball shop believe it or not the ch the shelf is empty I don't know what the problem is some of the store I think we are on the a different different way of living now because I have no idea what's out there it's just difficult and different now so yeah, check it out if you and then one of the beads here that you know I ordered online and this sometimes the gas station have it for ninety nine cent which is cheaper about this much on a different store it can be up to two or three bucks if you can get one. And some of them it become up like a whole box. It can be like seven or eight bucks. So, and I only get it for ninety nine cent. Just have fun with it. So, and it just one it come with six pieces. It's only a buck forty nine. So, I would say just keep your eye out and. I will just have fun with fishing and see. I bought three bucks of this, and if it bigger store or some different store, it can be like five, six, seven bucks. So it's good to have it, and not just that. And then I put them together like this, and. Now I'm gonna use the tool and press it down and make it barbless and that's what I'm gonna try to fish with this. I'm gonna set it to tail on below my bob bob oh you know god I can't even think you know just set it below my bobbler and it's two string just like uh my drawing here so this is a fishing pole tip and then here the 16 inch and 18 inches and that will be my unreal eggs so that's how i'm gonna do it and uh so at gas station i also find out this swivel is so cheap too. I think it probably from their old stock or something. It's only a buck sixty nine. And I recently purchased this from a big store. 
uh, you know, spot. At big five, you got to pay three or four bucks for this. No, it's not cheap. So, yeah, just keep it in mind when you go to a different places and if you keep an eye on it, you might end up got a, got a good stock out of your fishing box with a little money you don't have to pay it extra i hope you like my channel so i'm gonna wrap it up and that's pretty much for today 10 things to do and 10 things don't to do for fishing with the uh, casting style at uh lower yuba river i hope this information is good for you to try to do a day mystery how to fish here and I hope my information is help you to make your fishing journey is easier and just have fun and fish on I'll see you next video and I will put the link of my article about today in summary if you want to check it out please do I also gonna have a link to a, a different uh outside of my uh talking today which is i'm gonna have an article about what i'm talking today that will be like an outside link like a, a a law and regulation that you might be good to look at it and learn more in the very I print detail to help yourself to be on the right place to be a good angler and a good fishing person. All right. Other than that, I hope you make time to go out and fishing and have fun and catch more fish. You gotta drop the line to catch the fish, though. Don't give up. All right. Bye. Have a good day.